Hey everybody, let's get started with some news. A teen without a license was arrested after he was caught on radar driving at 112 miles per hour on Interstate 75 in Sumter County. Angel Elian Zavala, 18, of Wimama, W-I-M-A-U-M-A, Wimama, was at the wheel of a white Dodge Challenger at 2.04 a.m. Saturday southbound on I-75 near Mile Marker 312 when he was caught driving at an excessive speed by the Florida Highway Patrol. During a traffic stop, he was determined as Zavala, who does not speak English, does not have a driver's license. According to the arrest report, a licensed driver who was riding with Zavala said he allowed Zavala to drive, even though he knew Zavala did not have a license. The passenger said he had chosen to do so because he was tired. Zavala was arrested on the charge of driving without a license. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $250 bond. 25 bucks. The passenger was issued a notice to appear for allowing an unlicensed driver to operate a vehicle. A resident of Villages was struck and killed early Monday morning near UF Health, the Villages Hospital. The 52-year-old man, who was a resident of the Lady Lake portion of the Villages, reportedly had been a hospital patient when he wandered away at about 5 a.m. into the northbound lanes of U.S. Highway 441 near Villaggio Senior Social Internet Cafe in the Sumter County portion of Lady Lake. The man was struck by a sedan driven by 20-year-old Gulfport, Mississippi woman, According to an accident report of Florida Highway Patrol, the man died at the scene of the accident. Florida Highway Patrol had several squad cars at the scene for several hours Monday morning. A body draped in a white sheet was on the ground. The medical examiner's office was also at the scene. The name of the deceased has not been released as of this morning. The next of kin had not been notified of the death. That's a shame. Makes you wonder, how does the patient wander out of a hospital? I suppose it can be done. Obviously, it, it was, but how? Jim Swanger, S-W-O-N-G-E-R, Jim Swanger, got a hole-in-one at hole number six at the Marsh View Pitching Putt. He also got a hole-in-one earlier this year. Congratulations, Jim. The Nudson or Nudson Soaring Eagle, Saddlebrook, Buffalo Glen, and Everglades softball complexes will be closed for maintenance Sunday, August 14th through Sunday, August 28th. If you have any questions and need any additional information, contact the Saddlebrook Recreation Center, 352-259-5377. Softball here is a big deal in case you guys coming down don't know. If you're looking for activities and you don't know what all the activities are, I can tell you that there, there's several of them that are just big. Pickleball, obviously, is is a big deal golf is probably the number one big deal and then you have softball the back to school prayer emphasizes at schools across lake and sumter counties continues to grow on sunday the back to school prayer event took place at local school campuses in lake and sumter counties during last year's prayer more than 2,000 people from over 100 churches gathered at schools across lake and sumter and surrounding counties to pray for the upcoming school year winter said that it is great to gather the community and be able to pray for the school students and staff a guest at the hotel in the villages was arrested at Lake Sumter Landing Market Square. A cleaning crew member flagged down a Sumter County Sheriff's deputy and pointed out a suspicious vehicle at a closed business at the square in the wee hours Tuesday, according to the arrest report. The driver of the blue Nissan passenger car was identified as 35-year-old John Joseph Jordan, who listed his address as the Comfort Inn and Suites on Avienda Central in the villages. However, Jordan initially gave the deputy a false name and a false date of birth. When he provided his true name, a computer check revealed that Jordan's Georgia driver's license had been suspended in 2021. Jordan was arrested on charges of providing false information to a law enforcement officer and driving while license suspended. He was taken into custody and booked at the Sumter County Detention Center on a $3,000 bond. Villagers plagued with flooding at a golf course near their homes are increasingly growing worried about sinkholes. Residents living near hole number four to Heron Executive Golf Course took their concerns this week before the project-wide community, which earlier this year committed to $100,000 in repairs at the golf course. Residents living at Hartsville Trail in the village of Sunset Point have detailed the smell and mosquitoes that have accompanied the flooding. However, a recent depression in the area has heightened 
their concerns and they are worried about the possibility of formation of a large fledged sinkhole. We really don't want to live like this, said resident Donna Atkinson. Timothy Collins, who has lived on Hartsfield Trail since 2020, he spent countless hours researching the permitting that was supposed to have taken place years ago. He said his search has been fruitless and he and his neighbors are dubious about the origins of the work that originally occurred on the golf course near their home. Bruce Brown, a district property manager, said core samples had been taken in the area leading to the discovery of some pockets and voids in the area. He said grout will be used to fill in the voids and shore up the density of the soil. Residents alleged they have been kept in the dark and fear a noisy pump will be installed in October and will be a permanent problem near their bedrooms. District manager Ken Blocker urged the residents to be patient. We are working on it. It takes time. But uh, let me just say this. I've seen sinkholes pop up here and there, and I'm not going to point out any particular area because, like I've said before, kind of think of a sinkhole as a tornado. They can pop up anywhere at any time. There's no one village that's in the villages anyway. There's no one village here that's going to be safer than another. You can only get the insurance in case something does happen. And I did a video on the difference between, and there's a major difference between, catastrophic ground collapse insurance and sinkhole insurance. Go watch that video. I'll see if I can put it up here if I can at the end of this video. But anyway, I've noticed that most sinkholes do seem to pop up around wet areas like a lake, a retention pond, or something like that. And so if you've got the house that's got that water view that you love so much, there's a couple of things that I know about it. One is nowhere in the villages are you guaranteed that your view out the back door will always be there. There is no guarantee ever. And just because you see a lake back there, and this has happened here, there's no guarantee that lake will be tomorrow or next year. A sinkhole can open up in the middle of that lake, and it has happened, like I said, and next thing you know, the lake's gone. And they may try to fix it, they may not, depends on how big it is. And if it's not very big, I'll tell you what I know what they've done with one. It was at the Hacienda Hills Country Club, I believe. That sinkhole kept opening up and opening up and opening up. And it was little pots here, and then they'd fill it up. And then a few months later, another little hole would open up somewhere else. And then it, it got to looking at it, and it was a straight line. It was all one huge sinkhole, but it was opening up in little, little spots. So what they done was they filled in what they could fill in, but where the lake was originally at, it was all dried up and, and gone. They just filled it in with dirt and threw plants in it. Now that's your view. Just know this before you spend that extra hundred grand on top of what a lot cost to get that water view or that nice pasture view in your backyard because there's nothing back there. No guarantee that that, that view will stay there. But in this area, let me just say, and I don't recall ever a sinkhole in that area. Now I could be wrong. You may want to research that. I, I have not, but I don't remember one. A village if any woman will lose her driver's license after a drunk driving arrest earlier this year when her smoking yellow Corvette broke down on Interstate 75. Nancy Banville, 55, pleaded no contest this past week in Sumter County Court to a charge of driving under the influence. She will lose her driver's license for six months, has been placed on probation for one year, and has been ordered to perform 50 hours of community service. Banville was spotted about 8 p.m. May 26 near mile marker 330 when her yellow Corvette was parked in the northbound outside lane. According to the Rest Department of Florida Highway Patrol, she was leaning against the guardrail and had a strong odor of alcoholic beverage. Banville said the Corvette began smoking and she stopped on I-75. She said she'd had a single drink at about noon that day. Yeah, one drink. That'll do it to you. Oh well. Hey, I got a I got a thought. All these people with getting picked over or are, are, are going to court and uh they have to do fifty hours of community service for whatever reason that they're doing. How about this? All these homes in the villages that are unkept and they need the yards mowed and the bushes trimmed and the house needs to be washed, all this kind of stuff because they're in deed violations. How about that being their fifty hours community service? They're villagers. Let them do the community service right here and mow that grass and trim them bushes and do all that kind of stuff, huh? Just a thought. I wish I was a judge. I would dream this stuff up. Here you go. Very next story. A neglected home in foreclosure in the village of Springdale could be the subject of fines as the result of a public hearing held Friday before a Community Development District 4 Board of Supervisors. A complaint about overgrown grass and mold was received June 8 by Community Standards regarding the home at 9623 Southeast 171st Argyle Street. The home is owned by Leonard and Ann Biggers. He is deceased and she has moved out of the state. 
just left the house behind? Does that make sense? That you would just move out of state and leave a house behind? The home is in foreclosure, according to community standards. The board granted seven days for the mold to be removed from the home. If not, the district will use its new authority to pressure wash the home and impose a $150 per hour fine each time it was washed. In addition, the district will begin servicing the lawn and imposing a $250 fine each time the lawn is maintained. The home had been the subject of public hearing in 2020. In that case, the fines were paid and the case was closed. Hmm. The fines were paid. You know, on these homes like that, where they just need cleaned up and, and fixed up a little bit, instead of just walking away from them, I just don't get it because I was a young man one time. These were the high, kind of homes that I would look for. The Community Development District 4 Board of Supervisors has voted to turn over a villa sign to the developer despite the suspicions of one of the board members. The CDD4 board voted 4-1 to one on Friday to turn the sign at the Phillips Villas over to the developer who wants to modify the marquee to indicate the presence of a retail tenant. The majority of supervisors viewed the developer's request as a means of offloading the cost of maintaining the signs from the residents of CDD4. However, Supervisor Don Deacon voiced a concern on the matter and suggested a delay. Maybe we need to study this issue a little further. He pointed to recent dealings with the developer as cause for concern, notably the cost of mysterious drainage problems at the Sawyer Villas. We are being held accountable for problems in the Sawyer Villas. We are looking at a close to a million dollar expenditure. Deacon added that the Amenity Authority Committee, on which Deacon also served, has been hesitant to grant a similar request from the developer with the regard to the Tierra del Sol Recreation Center sign. I'm not sure what the big deal is about the sign. I'm missing something here, I think. Like a 99-year-old villager's home, which is in foreclosure, was a subject of a deed compliance hearing Friday before the Community District 3 Board of Supervisors at Savannah Center. The home at 1741 Oak Forest Drive is owned by Robert Kimbrough Trust. Kimbrough, who turned 100 on October 20th, has moved to an assisted living center in the villages. His wife of 65 years died in 2011. In 2013, Kimbrough embarked on the villages honor flight to Washington, D.C., where his group had the opportunity to meet Bob and Elizabeth Dole during a tour of the war memorials in the national capital. Kimbrough, who had a long career as a dentist, also active in the MLK Commemorative Awards Committee in the Villages. During a public hearing on Friday, community standards indicated the home is in the process of foreclosure and the utilities have been shut off. The complaint was received June 9 by community standards about a brown and dead lawn. Community standards has reached out to the property preservation department for the mortgage company, but has been told it was not listed on their inventory for maintenance. The board granted 30 days for the property to be resodded and brought back into compliance. If not, a series of fines will be imposed you know it's possible he's in the nursing home unless he has alzheimer's or something i'm just looking for a way for the poor old guy to get this thing taken care of they could have somebody just go up there and represent him get him to sign papers uh, permission to sell the property i don't know man sometimes i don't think we look hard enough i out here oh Subject was detained after a standoff Saturday morning at the home in the villages. At the conclusion of the standoff at about 11.30 a.m., the Sumter County Sheriff's Office announced that the barricaded subject has been detained without incident. No additional information available at this time. During the 90-minute standoff, members of the SWAT team focused its attention at the home, located at the home, located in the vicinity of Clearwater Run and Pally's Island Path in the village of Bridgeport at Miona Shores. About 45 minutes into the standoff, a woman was seen leaving the home. She was assisted into the ambulance. It was a man who appeared to have been detained. It does not appear an arrest has been made in the incident. There were no bookings Saturday at the Sumter County Detention Center, which appeared to be connected to the standoff. Hmm. Reverse mortgage, economic woes, death, and long-term illnesses are all feeding a problem with abandoned homes in the villages. Once utilities are shut off, weed sprout and mold is seen growing on the home. It's only a matter of time before it becomes a neighborhood problem. While some may wave off the abandoned home issues as problems on the historic side of the villages, abandoned homes are becoming a problem throughout 
the villages, including the village of Fenny and further south. The Community Development District 5 Board of Supervisors have been trying to get ahead of this issue. The board will meet at 8 a.m. Friday, August 19th, and will be discussing a possible amendment to its rules to deal with the problem of abandoned homes. The meetings will be held at Seabreeze Recreation Center. For instance, a home located at 1380 Florence Path in the village of Liberty Park was the subject of a public hearing earlier this year before CDD 5 Board of Supervisors. The owners are deceased. The utilities have been shut off, and there was mold growing on the home. The board can impose fines, cut the grass, and power wash, but that's about it. Supervisor Reed Panis has said there are warning signs that should be heeded. Once the utilities get shut off for lack of payment, we ought to know that. We own the utility district, so we should be able to get the information. It ought to be red flagged when the water is shut off. Anna said with regard to the North Sumter Utility Dependent District, which provides water and trash pickup, we need to be proactive. I agree. Reverse mortgages, I think, is a problem because once they pass away, it goes back to the institution where they got the reverse mortgage. They don't uh, seem to really care one way or the other. They take their, they drag their feet. I don't know what the deal is. All I know is some of these homes are becoming a problem. And I wouldn't want to live next door to one of these homes either. So I totally understand. A younger man who had been living with an older woman in the villages has been sentenced to pawning her jewelry. What's the matter, lady? Did your boy toy steal something? <laughs> Gary Restiffo, 59, who has a long history of theft convictions, reportedly flattered the 74-year-old village of Alhambra woman and told her she did not look her age. Come on. Those pants don't make your ass look fat. <laughs> Brett Defoe, who had been living with his parents in the village of Virginia Trace, moved in with the woman. Now, I should have told you something right there. A 50-some-year-old guy still living with mommy and daddy. I won't go off on a rant. The woman contacted the sheriff's office on February 22nd to report that jewelry had been stolen from her home while she was out of town around Christmas. She initially chose not to report the missing ring, a 14 carat yellow gold cocktail ring, with four carats of diamonds, a 14 yellow gold ring with multiple rows of diamonds inlaid in it, and a 14 carat yellow gold solitaire engagement ring with a one carat round gold cut diamond. The rings had a combined total value of $8,000. When she discovered that her wedding ring was missing, that's when she called law enforcement. A detective discovered the rings had been pawned December 27th at Neighborhood Pawn Shop in Bellevue. The detective showed the woman a photo of the rings. She positively identified the rings with 100% certainty. Last month in Marion County, Retzfo was placed on four-year probation on charges of dealing in stolen property and giving false information to a pawnbroker. He also has been ordered to perform 80 hours of community service with Marion County Solid Waste Litter Control. Why can't he use this guy to mow the grass on some of these abandoned homes here? Give him a power washer and let him go ahead and wash all these homes. It, 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 to me, it kills two birds with one stone here, and, and that way the residents don't have to pay to have these homes taken care of. The probation sentence includes another charge of theft from when he was working at Sonic in Somerville. In that case, he was charged with having sticky fingers and taking $50 from a case box. The Cleveland native was convicted of theft 13 times in Ohio before moving to the villages. It's a history. It's a history with these people that follows them everywhere they go. Thanks, Mommy and Daddy. An Indiana chiropractor was jailed after a brawl was sparked by his alleged touching of women at Margarita Republic in Spanish Springs Town Square. Eric William Hansen, 56, of Batesville, Indiana, ooh, I know Batesville fairly well, is facing two counts of battery and one count of trespassing following his arrest at about 11.30 p.m. Friday at the popular night spot, according to the arrest report. Anson was asked to leave by security personnel after complaints that he was putting his hands on the women. The woman said Hanson had been oddly staring at her. Hanson got between the woman and her male friend and put his hands on her hip. Hanson began using obscene language about the woman and her boyfriend. I'm sorry, that, that's just disgusting. 
Anson refused to leave, but was eventually escorted outside by security personnel. Once outside, Hanson used his fist to strike the security guard on the side of the stomach. The security guard pushed back in self-defense and the two men began to wrestle. The manager at Margarita Republic said Hanson had been told several times to leave the establishment. I'm getting a little dry throat. I'm sorry. Hanson appeared to be under the influence and was unsteady on his feet and had very slurred speech. He admitted he had been drinking. He was booked at Lake County on a $4,500 bond. A villager suspected of impaired driving refused to provide a urine sample to police. Rebecca Lynn Shuford, 61, who lives in the Birchbrook Villas located behind Mulberry Grove Plaza, was driving a gray Dodge pickup shortly before noon Saturday on US 27 and 441 when she made an abrupt U-turn according to the arrest report of Blazer Lake Police Department. The driver of another vehicle was forced to slam on his brakes to avoid the collision. A traffic stop was initiated at racetrack. I'm not drunk or on drugs, the South Carolina native told the officer. However, her eyes were glassy and her pupils were constricted. She was invited to participate in field sobriety exercises but couldn't follow instructions. The exercises had to be stopped out of concern of her safety. She provided a breast sample that registered 0. .000 blood alcohol content. What does that tell you? She was asked to provide a urine sample, but politely declined and said she did not have to use the restroom. She was offered water, but refused. She was warned that not providing a urine sample could be considered a refusal to submit to testing. She still refused to submit to urine sample. Uh, she has a lawyer in mind. Schubert was arrested on charges of driving under the influence and refused to submit to a test. She was booked to Lake County Jail and released after posting a $3,000 bond. We'll hear from this again soon. A homeless man was arrested after he was found sleeping outside a business in the villages. Jason Iannotti, 41, was found sleeping on a bench at about 5 a.m. Thursday at Bath and Body Works at 1030 Bachara Boulevard, according to the arrest report from Lady Lake Police Department. The Missouri native told police he was homeless and had nowhere to go. He was in possession of a backpack which contained four syringes and methamphetamine. Iannotti was also wanted on an Indiana warrant charging him with failure to appear on a drug charge. Good God! Is all the Indiana people, my home state, gone nuts also? Jeez! Almost embarrassing. Indiana. Midwestern people. Hospitality. Drugs. It just doesn't go together. He was arrested on charges of possession of methamphetamine and possession of drugs and equipment. Uh, he was booked at Lake County Jail on a $3,000 bond. Keep him there. That way he can't buy more drugs. A mud-soaked drunk driving suspect was arrested after overturning his vehicle in a crash which occurred in a construction zone in Lady Lake. Joshua Brent Chisholm, 35, of Fruitland Park, was driving a black Toyota 4Runner at about 10 p.m. Friday in the vicinity of U.S. Highway 27 and 441 and Teague Trail when he crashed into the concrete barrier in a construction zone, according to the arrest report. He drove off an embankment, flipped the veal multiple times until it finally landed on its roof where it was found by the police. The vehicle had rolled 25 feet from the roadway. Witness saw Chisholm crawling out from under the vehicle when police found Chisholm. He was sitting on the ground covered in mud from head to toe. Lake EMS personnel were summoned to the scene, but Chisholm declined transport to a local hospital. However, officers later had Chisholm taken to the Advent Health Waterman for a medical exam prior to being booked at the Lake County Jail. It appeared Chisholm had been drinking, but he refused to provide a breath sample. He was arrested on charges of driving under the influence and possession of methamphetamine. He was booked at the jail and released after posting a $3,000 bond. Two teens were killed in a crash earlier this year in the construction zone at U.S. Highway 27 and 441. I spoke of this before. If you can avoid that area, if you can, I just recommend you do so. Just if you can get there without going up 27 and 441, um, that's just what I would recommend. That being said, I think that's going to be the news for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And you get all this absolutely free on YouTube. 
Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for the comments below. I appreciate all the comments. I guess I'll see all of you on the other side. And don't leave your keys in the golf cart.